This is Neutral Ice. He scores! He's backhand towards the goal, loose puck, and he scores! Tie game! Can you believe it? Buffalo's best hockey show every Monday night. In front of Richard, oh, a miraculous stop by the Blackhawk. Oh, Campbell just destroyed a burner. Down it goes, the shot, score! Polino scores! Now, here are your hosts, Nick Lippa and Jack Sullivan. It doesn't get it! On Buffalo's Original Alternative, 91.3 FM, WBNY. 91.3 FM, WBNY, Buffalo, Buffalo's Original Alternative since 1982, brought to you by the Buffalo State College Student Activity Feed. This is Neutral Ice, back hockey season, almost here, Brayton, isn't it? Yeah. And we're getting real excited here, here in studio, Jack Sullivan, back with us. Jack, how you doing? I'm doing all right and happy to be back. He's just so mellow and has got a beautiful voice. <laughs> nice and calm. Nice and calm. Voice of angels. Joe DiBiase, Frank Arcari joins us as well. And we got a bunch to talk about today in tonight's hour. Oh, man. We were having a huge debate before we even came in the studio about what's going to happen in the Western Conference this year. And we like to talk our Sabres here on Neutral Ice. But let me tell you, the Central Division in the West is just – oh salivating with talent. I mean, when you look at these rosters, uh, we were talking, we don't think, any of us, we don't think there is a bad team here out of any of those teams in the Central. Does anybody object that on air? Nope. No. No, I mean, it's it's fair to say that it's the best in the NHL. I mean, you're talking about it right now. One of the teams that was the worst in that division last year, the Dallas Stars, they're a team that could contend for the Stanley Cup this year. And they had one of the best players in the league all around last year, two of them, and Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. Mm-hmm. And you could argue they've only gotten better on the defensive side with the signing of uh, goalie uh, Niemi as well. Yeah. So now you have Niemi and Lettinen. So very interesting to see what the Stars are doing. But let's talk about who we think is going to come out on top this year. And we'll start with Joe. Joe, out of the Central Division, who do you think is going to come out on top? I think it's going to come down to the Minnesota Wild and the Dallas Stars. I think Minnesota is actually going to come away with it. Um, we talked about earlier about Dubnik being a big X factor on whether they can get it done. I think he's going to have a good season, not as good as he did last year, but I think it will be good enough where I think their defense, while not elite, is one of the better ones in the division, and I think their offense is just supreme. So. When I'm looking at them versus Dallas especially, Dallas I think has more questions in goal, and they have a young defensive core. So I just think Minnesota's more established. All their players are like right in their prime, so I like Minnesota this year. Frank, what are you thinking right now? I, I mean, right now I'm thinking Minnesota as well. And, you know, Joe, Joe's right. Their offense, it, I'm not going to say they're supreme, but it's very solid. And that, that's why I got to say about this team all around. Their defense especially, it's solid. The like every, you can't say that not one of their guys on their de- on their defense is a bad player. I mean, Ryan Suter is their number one. Jonas Brodin has been their number two, and he's a very good number two. And then you also got to add now Matthew Dumba is a year a year better as well, and he could easily be in the top four this year to go along with a guy like Jared Spurgeon. And then you have uh, a Christian Fallon and a Marco Scandella. That's a very good top six right away for Minnesota that could probably contend with a team like Nashville for one of the best defenses in the central division or just in terms of overall, their overall uh, talent. And then their office too. I mean, you got, Co- you got Koivu, Vanek, Pomval, obviously Parise, uh, Granlin, Niederreiter. I think Niederreiter's going to have a really good year this year. And then, you know, going to uh, Devin Dumnik as well. Dumnik had a 936 save percentage and a 1.78 goals against in 39 games with them. Last season, I know he's not going to pop that that good numbers, but if Dubnik can have at least a two point three goals against and maybe around a nine fifteen nine up close to a nine twenty save percentage, Minnesota easily can win this division. Well, I, I don't I don't want to say easily. I mean, if he has a nine fifteen save percentage, I don't even think they're finished second. I think they finished third just because I, of how much talent is in that division. The fact of the matter is, I, there is going to be a goalie that's going to be hot and post above a nine. 9- Two two save percentage in that division, and they will probably be the team that wins there. The question I have 
is can Dubnik come close to repeating that success? And by close, I mean, can, is, can he be within 15% of his save percentage? So that means somewhere along the lines of being between uh, 921 and 925. And that's a big question I have because if he can do that, then I think that's viable. But if he can, I just I think there's other teams with too much offensive firepower. You can't roll with that save percentage against the Dallas Stars next year with their explosive offense and expect to be able to win games as good as the defense is for the Minnesota Wild. The Minnesota Wild remind me a lot of if they're going to depend on that, and they do have a better defense, much better than the team I'm going to mention here. But Varlamov from the Avalanche the year before, they rode him hard, and when he did not come close to repeating the success, they were one of the worst teams in in the Western Conference, uh, not terrible, but they were they were probably they were bottom six in the Western Conference, and that's something you look at. And I see the Wild; they're not going to be that bad, but I don't think they're going to be number one. I look at a team. I honestly think the Dallas Stars can make a serious run with the improvements they made. And with a healthy Sagan and Ben, if that team can play better at home and the defense plays any better, I think part part of it for me is. Uh, Trevor Daly is no longer on the Stars, who single-handedly lost them games last year. One of the, uh, I called, the least least valuable player in the league, including one of the most horrific games I've ever seen against the St. Louis Blues, where in five-on-five five action, uh, gave up four goals. and or, uh, Sorry, in five-on-five five action, gave up five goals, and the sixth goal the Blues scored, he was in the penalty box after taking a penalty. Uh, one of the worst games I've ever seen in my life somebody play. And Daly did that on the basis. Actually, it got so bad for the Stars last year that when Daly got hurt, the Stars got on the winning streak and he came back and it was just like clockwork. They went back to being inconsistent, having poor defensive shifts. There was rumors about Daly having a hip injury and that being why they played poorly. I don't know if you blame that on Lindy Ruff for taking care, but all I know is that Daly is no longer there. I don't trust Lindy Ruff, and I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not a big Lindy Ruff guy. I know we're from Buffalo, and I got a lot of respect for Ruff for what he did with the Sabers, but I, I'm just not sure that Ruff has the chops to get this team to one. But I do think that they have one of the best offenses in the league this year, and if they have any improvement in defense, they're going to make a run for it. And a team like Minnesota needs Dubnik to be there. I, I personally, if I got to make a pick, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to go Blackhawks. I mean, I mean, you look at you look at a team like the Dallas Stars that you were just mentioning. They've had a huge overhaul, not really huge overhaul, but I mean, they've had a significant overhaul this off season. You bring in a guy like Patrick Sharp in the trade with Chicago, who's your second line left winger, right behind Jamie Ben. Really, really awesome. You got Tyler Sagan as your top line center. Jason Spezza is your second line center, even at times first wing, first wing right winger. If you really want to have that superstar first line. Uh, and then you've got guys like, I mean, Alesh Hemsky, he can still play in the NHL. He's still a fairly decent player with some good talent around him, which he has. Nachushkin is healthy. Nachushkin is healthy. He's expected to be a top line right winger, second line right winger. expected to play with Sagan and Ben. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you even got guys like Patrick Eves. He had a huge bounce back year, year last year. He had, a, he's, he had a concussion, so we'll see how well, he Well, I mean, recovers. it was, it was a, another concussion that he's had numerous times in his career, but for the type of year that he had last year, it was a, it was probably one of his best years of his career, and he's 31 years old right now. You got Cody Eakin, who you just extended to a yeah, new yeah. four-year deal. Uh, Antoine Roussel, who still plays really, really a, a, a nice solid, game, solid good two-way game. game. Yeah. You got Vernon Fiddler, who's a veteran who yeah. can score goals, who's got Brett, who's Brett Ritchie produced. might even compete. Brett for a Ritchie, spot. you got Curtis McKenzie, and then yeah. on defense, you got Goligoski, who's one year left in his deal. You just ex- you just re-signed John Klingberg to a really nice deal, and he's a great defender. He'll be. Oh, Number yeah. one in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got a t- you got you know Johnny Oduya, Jason Demers, Yerky Yokopaka, who you know he's still got a lot of room to grow. You got a guy like Jamie Oleksiak who needs to continue to develop his game, even yeah. though he's on a short leash this year. And even you got a guy like Jordy Ben, who you know he's going to play. He's a six seven. Yeah, guy. he's a six mm-hmm. seven guy. But you know what? He's the he's the type of guy that defensively you can rely on. And they have a deep prospect pool. There's the the amount of depth in Dallas is, is arguably at this point after the Sabers making their trades deeper than any other pool. And I look at a player like Jason Dickinson. Did you mention? Jason Dickinson. Jason Dickinson. He's yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he's another one. He's he, not going to play a lot in Dallas this year, he, unless, unless there's, there's injuries. An injury. Yeah, but of that's, course. But that's that's the one thing I want to make note of is that this is one of their best prospects, mm-hmm. and he's the guy that on um, I would say over half the teams in the NHL right now, mm-hmm. he, they'd be looking to get him on a third line scoring line, yeah, some way up there because of his potential, what he can do in the league. 
Dallas Stars just have so much depth and so much player with a guy right. like Cody Eakin that's already there. They don't need that. Mm-hmm. So you look at that and you go, wow. So they could. You look at teams like that and you go, okay, can Minnesota afford to have that like second line center injury? Can they afford to have that? If I look at Dallas and Cody Eakin gets injured, the drop off between Eakin to Dickinson is probably going to be less than the drop off between somebody in Minnesota with some of the depth. They, their depth has just been there's so many trades they've made over the past mm-hmm. couple of years, trading away picks, trading away uh, future assets to try to make those runs like getting a guy like Chris Stewart last year or Pominville the years they've done before, that eventually catches up with the franchise, even if you've got some solid players in place. Dallas has put together a roster just like the Lightning have in the East that's full of youth for long, long continuous runs towards the Cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and Dallas, one of their issues last year was goaltending. Kari Lattinen was inconsistent. Their backup goaltending was very inconsistent. Yo, uh, they started out with Anders Lindback. He barely could even get a win in Dallas. Horrid, but uh, they, he didn't. Yeah, Jonas Enroth, he was okay. I mean, he he had an okay stint with Dallas, but it was nothing spectacular. And now they went out and got Antti Niemi to back up or even start over Kari Lattinen. Um, you know, you got a 1A, 1B there. That's going to be huge for a team like Dallas because if one goalie can't produce, you put in another goalie, and if they can produce, then you start them, and then you just you just keep playing the hot hand, and whoever's going to have the hot hand for the majority of the season will get the start. And, and I mean, I guarantee it, it, it may be an even set of games for each goaltender. They might both play 41 games the whole year just because they're 1A, 1B, and there's no doubt about that. I mean, I mean pick an argument for that because, I mean, you got Niemi, who's won a Stanley Cup with Chicago, and Niemi's still pretty young. He's only, what, 31, 32, 32 years old. Kari Lettinen's 31. So, I mean, you know, they've had experience in the NHL. They've had their runs, and they both have shown that they can be number one goalies. Kari Lettinen had a great year the year before last, and Antti Niemi, when he was in Chicago and in the first couple of years with San Jose, he was very good, too. I mean, Antti Niemi... What was it? Two or three years ago, it was up for the Vesna as the NHL's yeah. best goalie. Yeah, yeah. years ago. Yeah, was, I think it was a shortened season. So I mean, their their careers are nowhere near over, but I mean, they're going to have to fight it out in Dallas. And you know, I think that both of them are going to be willing to you know split the time. I mean, they're going to have to. And that's one of the points I think you make that are absolutely great. You talk about that the goaltending is going to get better. It didn't. It couldn't have really gotten any worse for Dallas last year. No. And you look at Dallas almost made the playoffs last year with that horrific goaltending. Could you imagine if Dallas has a goalie that posts a 9 2 save percentage with the offense they have? You're looking at a team that is going to be top three. Their defense has got to be better. Their defense has got to be much better than they were last year. They're they're younger. Their defense is a little bit younger. They got Yoki Paka. They've yep. got you know they've got Klingberg. Yeah. Um. I mean, their oldest guy is Oduya, and he, Oduya is only 34. Yeah. Yeah, 33, 34. Yeah, right. Now, now we've been hard on the stars. Now, we've been, like, really going for the stars here. I want you, I want you guys to have a counterpoint over there as well for the Wild. Um, as So what do you guys have a counterpoint to for us saying something like, okay, what do you believe the Wild can do that the stars can't coming into this year? I would uh, go ahead. Okay, go okay. Um, I like Minnesota's defense a lot better than I do. Uh, not a lot better, but I think Minnesota's defense, is, as I said before, it's more solid than Dallas's. I know that if even if an injury happens, I think Minnesota would be fine because their seventh guy right now would be uh, Nate Prosser, and he's a, he is a pretty good seventh guy. Down in the minors, remember, they signed Mike Riley, and he'll be playing in the AHL this year. He may see some NHL time. He's a very good two-way defenseman. He's from the state of Minnesota, so you know there's got to there's be that push that he wants to play play home. Um, and Minnesota, let's see, they got Gustav Olofsson. He's... He's all right. He you know, he could be he could be. Minnesota did draft pretty well this year, especially in their offense. They got Is the anybody this year they drafted really gonna make an impact though this year with the Wild? Um nah, probably not. I don't think Joel Erickson sh- Eck yet. is gonna be in the NHL. Yeah. I think he's going back to Sweden to play another year. I mean when you look at it, I think that the the one thing the Wild does it almost the, the only the two things they do is just the top end defense in Minnesota. Very, very good. Especially because they can eat minutes. Something that Dallas doesn't necessarily have yet, especially with some of the youth there. Uh, they're just not guys that can put it in those minutes yet and log those games. You don't expect Klingberg this year to go in and be like a suitor who's like going to be like, oh, yeah, I can eat 30 minutes, no problem. Um, that's something Minnesota does, and the goaltending is just more consistent there in Minnesota, and I, I agree with that from what we've seen with Dubnik. The question I have, though, is that let's say Niemi posts a 9-1-8 and Dubnik posts a 9-2-2. Is Minnesota going to have enough offensive firepower really to – 
outscore the Dallas Stars, even if the goaltending is even slightly worse? Well, I mean, they've got, uh, it, don't get me wrong, Minnesota's got some really good offensive talent. Zach Parise is very good. Miko Koivu at 32 is very good. Still, Thomas Vanek can put the puck in the net. A M- maybe Pom- not. He, maybe he's not I, the consistently. Problem, the, yeah. I, I know that the problem I do have Vanek, he's a very lazy player. Yeah, and, then that, but, and that's where I was trying to get that, at. It's yeah. just He's just not but consistently you still good. Got, yeah, but then you say you still got Palmerville. You know what you're going to get out of Palmerville. Charlie Coyle's an Charlie up-and-coming Coyle's talent. I think Granlund has had Grandlin's really good career so far. Duke. I think he might take a big step this year. I, said, I, I, I mentioned Niederreiter and I, Niederreiter earlier. And I he like was those goal scorer last year. And I like those plays. But if I go skater to skater and I look like I look at a guy like Parise, Sean <laughs> <laughs> if I look at a guy like Parise, I can immediately look at somebody else on the Stars to go Jamie Ben, and you're going to go. Is there even a comparison right now for offensive production? And it's no. Uh, Jamie Ben just blows him out of the water. And then, uh, and then you go Tyler Sagan, and you go, there's nobody that even comes close to that. Well, I mean, Parise's not a pure goal scorer. He's not. Pre- yeah. But the Stars just have guys who can produ- can make shots, produce points, and you want to go in, then you can go to Spezza, and you can go to Eakin, and then you can go to all the youth that Dallas puts up there on the offensive side. It's just for me, there's absolutely no comparison on the offensive side for Dallas, whereas – to, for Minnesota, I think there's no comparison for Dallas. Minnesota's defense, there's just no comparison there. There's just too much youth there for Dallas to really match what Minnesota has now. But on the offensive side, I just think that there's just too much talent for Dallas right now on the offensive side of the puck. And I like some of those guys, but they're more value guys, kind of similar to what the Sabres had supporting Briere and Drury. And like that kind of Briere Drury kind of guy is kind of like a Zach Parise right now, uh, comparative to where you just have two of the top five point guys playing on the same line in the NHL right now and Sagan and Ben. Dallas had more shots per game than Minnesota did last year. Dallas's average, but it's not by let, it's not by much. Dallas had thirty one point two shots per game, and the Wild had thirty point eight shots per game. And, but here's the thing: you got to have good defense and you got to have good goaltending because yep, Dallas yep. averaged three point, I believe it was one three goals per game. That was second best in the NHL. However, they gave up three point one three goals per game, which was right near the bottom of the NHL. Part you of that, can't have that. Part of that poor defense. Part of that poor goaltending as well as a mixture. Mm-hmm. I don't think the Stars are going to win the Central. However, I don't think the Wild are either, but I think the Stars and the Wild are going to be fighting for that two through four spot where you know one of these teams is going to be at least a wild card. And there's a reason why Minnesota was a playoff team last year is because they did not give up shots on goal. They only gave up an average of 27.6 shots a game, which is pretty good. They have one of the best defenses in the league. Ryan Ever- Suter, Jonas Top Brodeen, five. Marco Scandella, and, Jared Spurgeon. And I want to uh, Matt Dumba, by the way, who I think yes. is 21 yeah, years old. Very good point. Former yeah. seventh overall pick. Last year, he played 58 games, and he ended up with eight goals as a 20-year-old. That could increase. Yeah, yeah that could increase. I don't increase. know if he'll take... Uh, he'll take a big step at some point towards being like a really good really like he's, defenseman. Dumba, I don't know if it'll be this year, but even now, he's still very productive. You know Dumba. what's you know what's going to help him as well is the fact that he plays with so much talent. We saw what Myers was able to do when he played with talent in Buffalo. Yeah. A guy that young. Is that what you're going with, that, Frank? Yeah, I was going to say, I think Matt Dumba has the talent around him where he, he can really take a step up and even compete for a top four spot on the de- on the defensive side. This but year. there's no pre- the good thing is there's no pressure for him yeah, to do that because really they already have a pretty pressure. decent top four. The one thing I'm going to say uh, to do this and we'll, we'll go to Jack and Jack's prediction on the central right now. Uh, Minnesota, while they have really great defense, I think this really comes down to how good in net is Dubnik going to be because I look at Kemper last year and Kemper. Killed it at the beginning of the year with Minnesota. It just seemed like plug and play at goalie. It didn't matter who was there. The defense was so good. However, nine three six is a crazy save percentage, and that team, until he went on that winning streak, was not a playoff was not in a playoff position in the West. So when you're looking at this team, Minnesota, I think will be a playoff team. But I look at a team like the Stars, and if Dubnik is posting around nine one six nine one seven, they'll be a playoff team. But they're not going to be winning the division. It's going to be somebody else, and I think they're going to be fighting with the Stars at that point, who maybe aren't a Stanley Cup team this year, but they're developing into the one with the youth, where Minnesota may be running out of time three years from now where you look at that team, and now they got some youth coming up. A lot of their other guys, Parise will be older. Uh, Vanek, Koivu. Koivu will be older. Vanek will be older. It's like they kind of have those guys to come up and replace but replace them but they also have some of those contracts looking at you know looking at you Parise where it's really good for like the first three quarters of that contract and then it starts to get not as good for the money that you're paying them so it's a casualty of the old salary or the old uh 
the old CBA, which, by the way, you can't get a player like that in free agency. Nope. And I'm sure they're going to take the first three quarters of years to get a guy like Zach Parise for mm-hmm. what they get him for. Yep. But that being said, it's still going to hurt potentially where you end up pumping out average teams for a period of two years, kind of go through this weird process. Something I, I – we'll talk about this at another point. I fear the Rangers could kind of get into at this point with some of the trades that they've made because we got Jack on the show. But, Jack, before we move on, Central Division, who do you got one in the Central Division as of right – it's crazy, it's really early, but who do you think could come out the leader as of right now? I'm going Minnesota Wild too. Mm. Um, they're just a bigger team. Not much bigger than Dallas, but they're – I believe they're better balanced off when compared to Dallas's roster. And it's really going to come down to goaltending for either team for who's going to take the top spot, and especially in that division as well with all the elite players and quality players that are throughout the central division. Does anybody think the St. Louis Blues take a, a shot at there? I think they have a chance. I think there's a chance. They but have I... to get consistent goaltending. Yeah. They have to they have, have to. one of either Elliot or Allen to step up their game they, because if they do what they did last well, year, I mean, they're going to be in the same spot that they were. But remember, they did win the division last year, and their goalies neither goalie really stuck. But they up. didn't really get better. No, they. I mean, you but know, do they have to get better? Yeah, I yes. think so. They went into the playoffs, and they didn't even know who their starting goaltender was, and yeah. you know they decided, okay, we're going to start Allen for the playoffs, and boy, they just well, still couldn't. They still couldn't figure it out. They have to have goaltending. They have Louis, to figure and, it out on goal. Yeah, as I just said, St. Louis didn't get better. They traded away T.J. Oshie, but they and they brought in Troy Brower, which apparently a, a guy, solid player, a, a guy they need for that their identity. And it's, yeah, I'm not I'm not buying it for the return. And that they got. are you gonna ex- and I. But here's, here's a big question too with St. Louis. Can Tarasenko put up similar type numbers? Oh, I think oh, Tarasenko yeah. can. He's I one of the best. Can. He's one of the best right wingers in the NHL. Yeah, no but doubt. then after that, but the, then after that. The Blues it's, hurt themselves badly yes. by telling him to prove it to them, and he did because they could have had him for a much cheaper price yes. last and they year. Might, they might trade the Shattenkirk. Like, that's been that's floated been out there. I, they, they're putting all that out there, but, yeah. you know, I don't think – I, I mean, I think we may see one trade, like a Nick Letty trade at the beginning of the year, but that's going to be to a team that needs ca- salary cap space. Yeah. Um, because that's what Chicago had to do. They needed cap space. They needed to trade Letty. They traded him. And then Boston needed cap space, and they had to trade Boychuk. Yeah. It, it happens to those teams that come you know, a week or two before the season when it comes to that salary cap crunch. That's when you're going to see a trade like that. And, and right now, you could see Chicago make another trade. They I mean, have, they, they, might, they might trade. I mean, they're probably not going to trade a defenseman, but they're going to no. have gonna, to trade somebody. They're going to try to get rid of Bickle. They yeah, they're going to they try and get rid of Bickle. But they still have to sign Kruger. His salary cap is so high for a fourth-line left winger, nobody's going to want him. No. They kind of just put themselves in a hole. A team that might have to make a trade come day like come a week before, you're looking at Chicago, you're looking at Tampa Bay, yeah. Um, yeah. maybe even Philadelphia. Phil, I mean, I think Philly will be okay for now. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's just uh, I'm not sure anybody in Philadelphia expects them to win to actually win this year. I don't think so either. No, but I mean, it's kind of a weird state their franchise is in right now, where you're like, we well, you got some really great top because right now, according to general manager, the Lightning are above the salary cap by over five hundred thousand, by over six hundred thousand, I should say. Te- teams yeah. that are in a bad spot, Lightning have so much youth they can afford to trade somebody away. Maybe a Ben Bishop. To a team that's goalie needy, mm-hmm. if they really wanted to, with the talent they have behind him, Maybe because not he yet. Is before yet, Vasilevsky, not yeah, yet. not yet, not yet. I'm saying that this is this is where they can hold off and then do that yeah. mm-hmm. at some point. Uh, that's where they can look down the line. As we're a team, as where we look at the Anaheim Ducks oh. and we go, oh, wow, your team is just not in a good spot right now financially wise, especially after that uh, Kessler deal. Mm-hmm. They are in a lot of trouble. There are a couple of teams out there that are financially. Uh, done for within the next three years. Right. And the Ducks are one of those teams where they have Corey Perry and they can totally, the Perry gets Lov, Ket, Kessler, that thing is going to carry them all throughout because once they have to pay some of their higher defensemen, uh, they're going to find a hard time doing it. So that's another team in the future. Next year you could see maybe they try to clear some room and trying to sign some of their the defensemen. Only, I, the way it looks like I'm on General Fanger as well, Brayton, with Tampa Bay, the reason that they're over the cap is because they still have Matias Olin's contract on here. Yes, they do. And, and Olin, I, Olin's not going to play. No. So you can cut his contract right away. That is true. Yeah. But I mean, still, I mean, I think they, they, I mean, they could the make li- a deal, but the lightning's more long term that concern. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to make room for people you have to right. sign, especially and with all gotta, your youth. They do have to sign uh, 
Kucherov this year. They got to sign Stamkos sign too. Stamkos, got to sign Stamkos, which is going to yeah. be a monster deal. That's going to be yeah. a monster deal. I, I have a feeling that one of Kucherov or Stamkos are going to be leaving the Tampa Bay Lightning after this year. And if it's me, you think I there's think, any chance? I Stamkos think is good. I no, no. If if it's me, I'm signing up Stamkos for a long time. I mean, as long as I can go the max eight year deal. Uh, you know, I'd give him ten mil plus a year. He's he's worth ten mil plus a year. What what I'm looking at right now is is you you unload whoever you have to to ensure your future. And if you like Kucherov being a part of your future and Stamkos, you lock up both of those players for a long time, and you do what you got to do to make room. That's one of the reasons why I think Ben Bishop may be on a different team come next year, possibly uh, very well because they'll do that. Well, five point nine five million have. cap hit. Yeah. you're telling me right well, now you can't get Kucherov for a deal around that kind of hit, and then clear some other cap to make room for a guy like Stamkos. Well, mm-hmm. And Sabres fans, by the way, should take note of the Sabres and. Oilers fans should because you're looking at potentially the minimum you're going to see for a guy like Eichel and McDavid. You should take what they give Stamkos and then add like two to three million to that deal, and that's probably what you'll see Eichel and McDavid getting three years from now. Well, the Tampa's Wait, problem getting is, getting like ten plus mil three years from now. Yeah, for our not three years from now, but uh, down the line after that. I'd say, I'd they're, say they're more like. Good. Let, let, as Ryan O'Reilly just got seven and a half million for his age. Right. Yeah. You're talking about Jack Eichel and Connor McDavid, two generational talents at their age. They're probably going to get like a one year, two uh, not one year, like a two year. I'm not even sure if it's two year be bridge a, deal. I'm not even sure if it's going to be bridge at this point because bridge contracts we're kind of seeing going away from cert, from certain players too. And I'd be interested to for see for a franchise player. Yes. But that's for, what I'm. That's what I'm concerned about, especially Sabres fans. Could you imagine? This is a hypothetical situation, but could you imagine? Let's say Eichel's 21 and McDavid's 20, and they go, "We both know what I am." We both know what I'm worth. Give me the money now, and let's do it right now. Mm-hmm. If they're 21 and both putting up – if Crosby's putting up 100 points his rookie season, McDavid comes out and does that in Edmonton, and he puts up 100 points in three straight seasons, are you really telling me right now to Connor McDavid that we need to sign you to a bridge deal for two years to get it going? If I'm McDavid, I'm going, no, give me the money now. This is what I'm worth. Mm-hmm. If I'm Eichel, I'm saying, no, give me the money now. And if that's really the case, then they could get Stamkos money three years from now. And that's something where maybe that's a little uh, <laughs> crazy for me to say, but is that really so far-fetched to think that two players we consider generational talents? I think talents? the only way that if McDavid and Eichel get the type of money that a guy like Jonathan Taves, Patrick Kane, those guys are making, like $10 million plus per year, is if they're putting up the top points every year for the three years that they're, you know, they're coming up because you know yeah Crosby he made 100 points he he had 100 points in his rookie year if McDavid can do that three straight years maybe you give him that but I get but I think the thing is is that you know yeah he that those guys have to be right up in the top 10 of point getters in the NHL to I, get that type of money right out of their rookie deal. And, and Eichel probably won't do that but let's say Eichel lights it up the last year and a half of his contract let, yeah let's, let's say he really does that is it not crazy to think that Eichel could be making money more money potentially than Ryan O'Reilly if not the same well let's let's take a look at a guy like Stamkos Stamkos was was drafted he played right out of the OHL from Sarnia he was making 875,000 for his first three seasons yep. as, as an annual salary then he goes to the NHL where he made Eight million for the past one, two, three, four years. Now he's making five point five million, just as the way the contract worked out. So it's an average of seven point five million. Next year, he's definitely going to get around ten, eleven million dollars. Like, there's no doubt about but, it. He's only twenty five years old. So that's seven point five million. That seven point five million was years ago. Yeah, Ryan O'Reilly just got seven point five million. Mm-hmm. Eichel's going to get more than that when his contract comes up. If you're looking at what Stamkos got years ago. Eichel has to get McDavid. Those guys got to get more than that. We're talking potentially $10 million. We're talking potential around that time. If you put the inflation for what the NHL is, let's say the cap actually goes up over the next three. We're giving them three years to raise the cap here. Mm-hmm. If that's the case, we have to realistically look. That's potential. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that, you know, you, you got to look at, a, you gotta look at a, a, a contract like that. Stamkos is a top 10 player in the NHL. McDavid and Eichel are supposed to be top ten players in the NHL. Now, obviously, this this is you, we got to look at their performances right. for right. three years. Exactly, exactly. And Stamkos in his first his first year, he was you know he got off to a slow start. He didn't produce as much, but then years two and three, he was right up there within within the top ten of scoring. Which I think, and that's why he got his seven point five million per year average cap hit. And now next year, he's probably going to get ten million, eleven million. I don't think 12, but, I mean, you could be just slightly under 12. But, you know, 
I think Eichel, yeah, you're going to you're going to have to look at inflation. I'm sure that, you know, Eichel and McDavid are probably going to be getting around 8-9 million dollars in their right after their rookie contract. I I can imagine it. Maybe not Eichel, but probably McDavid. McDavid. Yeah. Um but I don't think they're going to jump from, you know, 925,000 to 10 million right away. I mean, you, if 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 Stamkos was getting 7.5 and this is 5 years ago, right. You have to think but that But then again, just remember Stamkos was signed before the new CBA was released. Very true. That's that a is ver- true. that's a very good point. Yeah. I'm looking at generational talent in the face of hockey right now though, and if Eichel does for 2 years of that, does uh, what like numbers top fifteen scoring numbers? Not to mention he's going to be playing on a supported line potentially with a guy like Ennis or with Kane or somebody of that kind of talent. You know points are going to be rolling through the door, and that's something to consider. So we're going to take a break. Up next after this, what's Cody Franson up to next on Neutral Ice? Why isn't there anything good on the radio anymore? Nope. Definitely not. Wait, I remember this. I loved this game when I was a kid. Who's playing video game music over the radio? You're listening to WBNY Buffalo, Buffalo's original alternative since 1982, brought to you by the Buffalo State College Student Activity Fee. I'm Nick Leba, and I'm here with Mike Indiano, and thanks for tuning in to our show, The Princess is on Another Station. Sweet. I wonder if they take requests. If you've got an idea of anything you want to listen to tonight, just give us a call at 716-878-5104 or visit our Facebook page, The Princess is on another station. We heard you like games, so we put a game inside your game show so you can play while you play. The Princess is on another station, 91.3 FM WBNY, Wednesday nights from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Why isn't there anything good on the radio anymore? Nope. Definitely not. Wait, I remember this. I loved this game when I was a kid. Who's playing video game music over the radio? You're listening to WBNY Buffalo, Buffalo's original alternative since 1982, brought to you by the Buffalo State College Student Activity Fee. I'm Nick Leba, and I'm here with Mike Indiano, and thanks for tuning in to our show, The Princess is on Another Station. Sweet. I wonder if they take requests. If you've got an idea of anything you want to listen to tonight, just give us a call at 716-878-5104 or visit our Facebook page, The Princess is on Another Station. We heard you like games, so we put a game inside your game show so you can play while you play. The Princess is on Another Station, 91.3 FM WBNY, Wednesday nights from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. It might be the door alarm or the new safety drain covers, the pool fencing, even the swim lessons. But the fact is, you can never know which safety step will save a life, until it does. Adding multiple safety steps to your safe pool practices can mean the difference between a close call and a call to 911. Simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit PoolSafely.gov. A public service message from the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, the American Red Cross, and YMCA of the USA. It's barbecuing generation. It began May 14th, 1988. This one, this, this one, this one, this one. It's an evil generation. Barbecuing generation. 91.3 FM WBNY, part of the barbecuing generation. You're listening to Neutral Ice on 91.3 FM WBNY. I am Jody Biasi, joined by Brayton Wilson, Nick Lippa, Jack Sullivan, and Frank R. Curry. We are going to tackle the Cody Franzen movement over the past few days. Cody Franzen, who has became a free agent on July 1st, had not signed with a team. Only marquee free agent really left. Um... Of course, Mike Harrington of the Buffalo News tweeted this week that he was in talks with the Sabres that the Sabres offered him a two-year deal. Now, this is a player that only 28 years old, so he's still in the prime of his career. Yeah. Offensive defenseman, which is what the Sabres really, that's the only thing they need right now is like yeah. a p- really good power play offensive defenseman. And Franson, by the way, since 2010, sixth best power play defenseman in the NHL. He has very been a efficient, very efficient defenseman. Yeah, when he was with Toronto, 
And I'm not going to say Nashville because he just didn't fit in with that team. No, I mean, he was on a bottom six, or he was on the bottom pair. He wasn't playing on the power play at all. Yeah. Um, I'll say this. He, I think, fits perfectly for this team just by the fact that they don't really have a guy like him. Right now, Ristolainen and Bogosian would be your top two defensemen on the power play. Um, yeah. Franz and then if you put if you if Franz and signs oh, he would if Franz and signs I think he would be the best one probably he would probably put over Salinen yeah probably and then just looking at him I think he kind of relieves some of the pressure off of maybe like you needing to play Carlo Koliakovo who we know can't stay healthy if you sign Franz and he would more relieve pressure especially well as, I I don't well go ahead. overall too because he would he would. He would play the top four. He would play top four minutes. Likely, you would probably see him with uh, Zach Bogosian, because you would, would you would, would. But then you would bump down Pizik or someone. And I'm just saying, then you wouldn't need to rely on Koliakovo to be in the lineup. Daily. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you would also you would have Pizik. You would probably have McCabe, and then Weber, Weber would be your seventh. Yeah. yeah got, well, a guy like Koliakovo wouldn't even make the scene. That that's the thing though. That's the thing. Carlo Koliakovo, even Bobby Sanguine too, and um. Uh, who's got Matt Donovan? Mm-hmm. They were signed. They were signed to be ready to play in the NHL if needed. They were meant. They were really meant to play in Rochester well, and if, be be there for injury depth. If they signed Franz too, I think it does. It affords McCabe the luxury where if he's not ready for the NHL, then he yeah. doesn't have to come in and play. Exactly. He can go back down to Rochester. He can be a top pairing defenseman yeah. there. Um, I just think Franzen's a player that fits the mold of this team. Right now, they're looking at a two-year deal, which I think is perfect That's, for him. That makes perfect sense. Because you're going to need to re-sign Zemgus Gergensen and Rasmus Ristolainen, yep. and you're going to have to re-sign okay. uh, Sam Reinhardt at some point. Yeah. Harry Snaps. Harry yeah, Snaps. Harry Snaps. <laughs> <laughs> so at some point here, you're like... Tim Murray designed all these contracts so that Giantas' contract expires when you need to re-sign those guys. Yep. Um, the only yeah. guy that really goes past is Matt Molson. But yep. then, um, which is fine. Yeah, and Josh George's contract and, and, expires. And Ennis's contract is fine, too. So, two-year deal for Franzen. He'll be 30 years it old. It would make sense, but now we just got to, you know, have him sign. It's still very surprising that he hasn't signed yet because he is in the prime of his career. He's a very good defenseman. As you said, he's one of the best offensive defensemen, one of the best power play defensemen in the NHL. He's got a really good shot, too. A very good shot. Ain is a big body. Six foot five. He's six foot five. He's an eight, uh, and, and more offensively minded, but he he can throw. The only thing that too. he needs work with is his skating. Yeah, he's you know his his fundamentals are not exactly all there. It's not like he's a horrible skater. It's just you know he's just it's not the best. Yeah, exactly. When you look at his points, especially, really, Bogosian, by the way, is the only guy that has eclipsed ten goals in a season on their defensive core right now. If you're looking at Franzen, he has done it. Um, he hasn't put up 10 goals, but when you look at his points, he's consistently putting up he good points. He had 36 points. points last season. He had 36, 30, the 36 year last, 36 last season. 2014, he had 33. Yep. The shortened season, he had 29 points in 45 games. That's that's impressive right there. Yeah, that so was his breakout year. While he gets, he doesn't get a lot of goals. He gets a ton no, of assists he gets, because he's because of power play. Yeah, and you look at his plus minus isn't always that good, but of course plus minus. Is but a he was in stat. Toronto. He, he was, was in Toronto. He was in Toronto. Um, and also in Toronto. A lot of times he was put out there in key situations yeah. to go out and shut down the other team's top yeah. line where really that's not a role I think he would have to play no, he here would. in Buffalo. It's sort of like Tyler Myers in Buffalo where yeah. he was put in almost every situation when he's not really in every situation type of defender. He's more offensive defenseman. Situational. His defensive game has been better, but it's not great. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Cody Franz in the same way, just not a great defensive defenseman. Just he's, he's meant for offensive opportunities. He's meant to really be a guy that can quarterback a power play. So, you know, when when you look at that, it's just you know, Cody Franzen definitely was I mean, but but that's what that's the penalty you get when you're on a horrible team is that you're expected to play every type of position when, you know, you should be specialized for a special role on a defense or an offense on a team, but when you're on a just a terrible team like Buffalo was last year or Toronto was last year, you just play anywhere and Coaches and general managers and even the players pray, okay, let's just hope this works tonight. Why do you think it really failed with him in Nashville? <sighs> because, I mean, mm. you look at the team that was around him. You look at the defenseman that he was – I mean, because, I mean, he has played in Nashville before, but he when was he was drafted in Nashville, him. yeah, he was drafted by Nashville. But when you look at Nashville last year, I mean, he they had – buried on theft. Track. Yeah, exactly. He yeah. was. He got – Shea Weber, Roman Yossi is your top pairing. You got Ryan Ellis and Seth Jones as your second pairing. Yeah. Your third pairing was, you know, Victor Bartley, Anton Volchenkov. I'm missing somebody. Holm. 
Yep. Yep. Matias and Ackholm. Then, and then you also, and then Cody Franzen. Yeah. And Cody Franzen. And, you know, they, I think they only had seven defensemen all year. And yeah. Ryan Ellis was playing better than Cody Franzen at the yeah. time because Ryan Ellis is more of a two way defenseman. Yeah. Uh, Victor Bartley's more of a two-way defense. He's more of a defensive defender, but still, I mean, you know, Cody Franzen, there was just no need to put him out there. He just didn't fit. Yeah, exactly. And it was and it was probably one of the reasons why Nashville lost to Chicago in the first round is, you know, if Cody Franzen had had a much better series than he did, it, that could have been a whole whole different series altogether with Nashville. Where honestly. do you think he would rank on the current Sabres defensive cores? I, th- I think right now he'd be the fourth. I would say he'd probably be four or five. Yeah, because uh, yeah. I would. You look at your you look at your defensive depth. You got Bogosian, Ristolainen yeah. as probably one two. You probably got Mark Pezik as number three. Maybe Josh Georges is yeah. number four. Josh Georges and Cody Franzen. I would probably say you would split four, or you would have probably one as the right four there, or the other yeah. one. Yeah. I think Mark Pezek at this point is your number three. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's going to be in the NHL. There's no doubt about, no it. Doubt about you, it. There's no reason for him to go back to the AHL. Not only that, but, I mean, his contract doesn't even have an AHL, you know, salary in it. So it's either... No, it's a one-way contract. Either one way or the highway. Yeah. One thing that's really great about Mark Pezek is just his ability to play either side. And that's key yeah. to this whole Franzen mm-hmm. deal. When you're looking at it right now as a Sabres fan coming in, if you, having a player like Franz in really opens up different opportunities, specifically on the power play, just absolutely golden opportunities. That's exactly what we were talking about. Cody Franz is one of the best power play defensemen in the NHL. Sixth best in, since 2010. Not yeah. ranks only behind uh, – I just lost it. And, and besides that, while Joe looks for that statistic, he, underrated – I think it's almost become underrated because I don't hear as many people talk about it as they used to in the hit department. He's a guy who can play the power play, but he's also a guy that can take the body. And that's something yeah. of a mixture that how many players can we really say that about confidence? Right, right, yeah. He can take the body, but in no means is he a is he a very physical defenseman. No, not even. He's, but he's, but he's just big. He's big. He, he'll I mean, knock he you has, off the puck. Yeah, he'll knock you off the puck. I mean... Is he going to be on the penalty kill? No. no. He's not a penalty kill defenseman. No. He's not a guy that's going to – I mean, he, he should be a guy for – everybody says this because of Tyler Myers being has big, how big he is. But Cody Franzen, he's six foot five. But is he a guy that's going to you know be like a Chara and get everybody out of the way for a guy like Tugarask? No. No. No, absolutely not. You could be super tall, but you could be a super good offensive defenseman like Cody Franzen and a Tyler Myers is, but he's not, he's not fit to be a defensive defender. No, he's a guy who's an offensive defender, but he's he's able to use his body as a defensive tool. Yeah, I think in a way to protect the puck. To you know, um, even 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 if he's going body to body with the guy, it's not the yeah. most overpowering stuff. Mm-hmm. But he's able to knock somebody off the puck enough. And we've seen, honestly, if you go back and watch Toronto games, he does it more than people think. And that's one of the most underrated aspects I think of his game. He's a six five guy who can operate the power play. Who's not a bad skater. It can knock you off the puck. This is something that I think he's trying to look for more than a one-year deal. He wants somebody to be like, hey, give me some love here. He's a guy who can operate from your three to five spot on defense. He's not going to be a top-pairing guy, but he's a guy that you I really think want. the reason why Cody Franzen has yet to be signed is because money and term. That's that's about it. I think NHL teams know, okay, Cody Franzen, you're, you're, you're talented. You've got some value to a team. But the fact is, is that... How many years do you want? I want more than I want three or four years. Okay, we don't want that. We want a year or two. Well, I think really because he's coming off three straight one year deal, so I think he yeah. would just like to have he just, a he wants deal to have not one he year. wants to settle in. He wants, he wants to be home. established in a home. Yeah, he wants a home. And what has he done to not earn a home? You're telling me a guy like Oduya who plays on the Blackhawks right now is going to get that kind of money for what he does? When you look at a guy like Franzen who, in a specific role, could operate on a team if he plays on the right side. Yeah, he he got put in the dumps in Nashville, basically playing a spot that he was not fit for and made absolutely no sense putting him with playing third line minutes there. I just They also didn't play him on the power play. No, and they didn't play him on the power play. It makes as much sense as having a guy like Cody Hodgson on your team and not playing him on the power play. If Buffalo signs Cody Franzen, Cody Franzen will be the quarterback on the second unit power play. Just probably playing at the point with Mark Pesek. Just like Airhoff will be with the Kings. And that's the kind of way you look at. Let me ask a simple question to everybody. Franson comes to the Sabres. Mm-hmm. Does it improve them in wins by potentially five wins this year, do you yes. think? As an individual Possibly. performance. I would say so. Possibly, They'd be yeah. a much better power play team. Yeah. They'd be a much more offensive producing team. Um, 
you know, because last year Especially you had the division they're in. Uh, that, that's that's a lot of points I'm, I'm throwing out there. That's ten, that's 10 points because point. last year last year we remember who was playing on the power play on defense. You had a guy like Andre Mazaros. You had Rasmus Ristolainen, which was good, but then you had like Andre Mazaros, even Zach Bogosian playing some power play time. Andre Bogosian, Benoit. Andre Benoit, yes. Bogosian, granted, he has some offensive upside, not not too much, but I mean, he's not a power play guy. He he, he never really was a power he's play guy in Winnipeg. Guy. He was never a power play guy in Atlanta. Yeah. He's more, defensive. he's more defensive. He's you know he's more the physical type of player. You know, if you I mean he's one of the players. that's just like okay, we need you for a power play here. It's just like okay, put me out there and I'll I'll do it. But it's like you know you got to play to especially now when you don't when you have the talent you got to play to your to your full potential with you know your your talent you got to utilize that now. Franzen gives the Sabers an offensive identity that's clear on from the defensive position mm-hmm. that you may not have yet. You look at a guy like Risto and you go, this guy is going to be really good doing some of these things on offense, moving the puck. I'm just not sure he's going to be that kind of guy this upcoming year. Maybe he molds into that kind of guy this upcoming 2015 2016 hockey season. Maybe it's 2016 2017. If it's if defenders take a longer time to develop, maybe he really breaks in 17 18. We don't know. We have to see when that break happens. We see flashes, but when will it consistently happen? Franz is the guy who comes in and goes, I can give you that support you need. He's one of he's been one of my favorite free agent defensemen that's been available. I see a guy like Sakara get signed to big dollars, and yet Erhoff and Franzen are looking for just like almost begging for jobs in certain situations. Erhoff just wants to play for a winner. Franzen just wants a home. And the fact of the matter is, if you're comparing them to a guy like Sakara, it's not that far off of production from a guy like Sakara. Sakara, very good. I don't want to underplay how good Sakara is with moving the puck. But if you're talking about the production, Erhoff, cheaper for what his value will give you to a team for a guy on the second power play unit. And Franzen, also cheaper when you're getting him on the second power play unit, and especially for what Franzen offers with his age as well. He's not a guy who's like coming out of his prime. Anybody want to guess? He's in his the, prime right now. Anybody want to guess the next youngest defenseman available in unrestricted free agency that is not Cody Franzen? Cody Franzen is 27. Sergey Gonchar. <sighs> well, not anymore. He's, Oli, a, he's on Oli. a professional he's trial. Oli Jokinen. <laughs> oh, God, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I uh, will guess... I... Mike LaFontaine. Andre Mazaros. <laughs> no, Andre Mazaros is 29. Good guess, though. Oh, well. Who is? Hint. Uh, he uh, Western Conference team. Central Division. Well, I thought he was a free agent. He played last year. He is a free agent. But he played on a Central Division team last year. Mm. Um, I'll give you another hint. Colorado. Yan Hada. No. Oh. He's very old. Um, Jeez, I don't know. Is it, uh, it's unrestricted, right? Yeah, unrestricted. I honestly have no idea. God, I'm, I'm Ryan Wilson. I don't know who that is. Oh, yeah. Ryan Wilson. Uh, bottom bottom defenseman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, what a drop-off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next youngest defenseman after that, Mark Fistrick, 28. Not even. Close. And then Andre Mazaros, 29. Okay. Those are all patch guys. France is a guy you could legitimately see with a three to four year contract being productive on one of those on, on, on this team. That's that's the one thing. Like teams out there will be trading for a guy like Franson mm-hmm. at the trade deadline who are looking to make a playoff push. They're like, we need help on the power play. Sabres need to. I mean, honestly, Sabres need to sign Cody Franz right now. I know they it's not a to. left-handed defenseman. I know. To. Yeah, I mean, they got to. get done. They got to figure it, something. It just has to get done. I don't think he's going to get three point three like he did last year. He's probably going to get anywhere between one and two million. I think that's where the the ballpark is right now. I'll give give him a three year deal for two and a half. What's the harm? You're not paying anybody. Well, there is like no the harm. harm. Three years, three Cody Franson, immediate Jergensen improvement on the power Bristol play, Island. and he's done nothing to show that when he's playing in the right situation. I think Tim Murray. I think play? Tim Murray wants to see this as more of a next year sort of thing because he doesn't want to sign Franson for probably more than two years because he could see say, okay, this year you know we're not going to be a playoff team probably, but we're going to be close. Next year is the year we're shooting for the playoffs. Does Cody Franson help us out next year for the playoffs? And if he sees it that way, then you just make the deal. If he doesn't, then you you kind of hold off on it. So you got to see what happens. So who would be running the second power play plan? Do you think a guy like McCabe, not this year, but next year, is the guy who's going to be doing he that? He would probably be the best it. tool for the yeah. second line but, power play, yeah. But you can look at it this way. isn't it? it if you're planning as a GM, don't you want to have three options to do that? Oh, of course you would. So, I mean, I'm looking past McCabe, and I'm going, I don't see a better option, really, for a guy than Franson, even if that comes up for the, for the set. You're not getting a guy like Ruedel. You're not going. To, you're not hoping a guy like George's pans out. You're looking for a guy that's going to help you generate more shots mm-hmm. in special teams. Franson just makes sense. Give him a three-year contract. Give him a home. 
Buffalo would embrace this guy, especially on the defensive unit, on a defensive unit that desperately needs depth besides some of the younger players that he adds what would be at his age, amazingly, a veteran presence. He would probably be the best. He would probably be arguably the best offensive defenseman that we have on the team right now because, I mean, Rasmus Ristolainen, yeah, he's, you know, he's. He'll get there. He's, he's getting, getting there. He's getting, getting there. there. But and he's bed some from But the thing games. is, is that he's 20 years old. He's yeah. more of a two way defenseman. He might develop into a player like a Duncan Keith or a <laughs> Drew Doughty. You talk about Doom, bud. You're just like, he scored eight goals in these games and he's turning 21. You're just like, oh, yeah, Risto's that young. Except he had to be called up and played all these years. Put that into perspective, guys. Where's Duma playing? And then where is Risto playing? Risto's playing a top line defense and or top pairing defense, and Dumba's, Dumba's playing bottom for pairing He's defense. Playing there you go. Mm-hmm. Expectations, people. The defense still is a progress and work. That's why you look at the team. You go seventy-five points to eighty points would be a huge improvement with this defense. Franzen, though, legitimately. Four to ten points improvement because of their improvement on special teams. But that's going to be all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for tuning in to Neutralize 91.3 FM WBNY Buffalo. Buffalo's original alternative since 1982. Brought to you by the Buffalo State Couch Unit Activity Fee on behalf of Jody Biasi, Frank Arcuri. Welcome back, Jack Sullivan, uh, Brayton Wilson, and I'm Nick Lippa. Join us next week. We'll talk more hockey. We'll talk some more Sabres. Tyler Hennis had some comments. We'll get to that next week. And we'll see where and how this France thing shakes out as we grow one week closer to the start of the NHL season. Stay tuned.